on the battlefield indrajit the eldest son of ravana injured ram and lakshmana he could not be seen yet he was showering them with arrows these arrows were shaped like serpents he hit different parts of the bodies of ram and lakshmana until not a fraction of their skin remained exposed the brothers bled profusely and looked like two palash trees in full bloom their pupils turned red and the bodies black like a mound of coal freshly mined writes valmiki indrajit aimed the arrows at critical parts of the bodies of ram and lakshmana his arrows had golden fins the victims became so weak that they could not lift an eyelid covered by nagpash their bodies bled like waterfalls hanuman and other vanaras surrounded the unconscious raghava brothers and grief enveloped the vanara army naturally ravan was overjoyed on hearing this news he asked his guards to fly sita in the pushpak viman to show her the corpses of her husband and brother in law he said go and tell by dehi that indrajit has killed ram and lakshmana her husband relying on whose chivalry she had refused to reciprocate my love has been killed even before the war began she should not wait for him now and dressed suitably in ornaments she should present herself to be at my service sita was asked to sit in the viman along with trijata her well wisher firstly they gave her a bird's eye view of lanka where flags were flying to celebrate rama's reported death at the hands of indrajit on the battlefield sita saw the heavily bleeding raghava brothers lying on a bed of arrows i have included mewar paintings on this theme look at them and see how the artists have brought the scene as depicted by valmiki raman to life on paper with paint and brush the armors of ram and lakshmana were shattered and limbs punctured their bows and arrows lay discarded they looked like statues sculpted out of arrows seeing the two princes lying in a pool of blood sita shrieked and wailed in a mournful voice she sobbed uncontrollably and lamented thus with shri rama's death all predictions of my bearing many sons have turned out to be untrue they were liars who had foretold that i shall be the consort of a king with shri rama's death the brahmins learned in jyotish shastra who had predicted that i shall be ever auspicious have turned out to be wrong my feet certainly carry the symbols indicating that i shall be a queen my hands and feet are marked by the lotus symbol i do not notice any indication in my limbs to even hint at misfortune or widowhood thought sita but the learned astrologers had predicted that i shall be anointed a queen when my husband ascends the throne today their prediction has turned out to be untrue kal has taken over fate and it is under his control that shri ram and lakshman are lying unconscious on the battlefield 
hearing Sita's wails, Trijata tried to pacify her and said, Devi, do not grieve. Your husband must still be alive, for I do not see his forces grieving. When a commander is killed on the battlefield, his disheartened forces lose direction and wander like a boat without a boatsman. Literary images of Valmiki are remarkable. His visualization, accuracy in descriptions is praiseworthy. Tapaswini said Trijata, I do not see any such commotion in the Vanara army. They have surrounded the princes to protect them. So lovingly I tell you that the princes are alive. Neither Indra nor the Devatas or the Asuras can vanquish the two brothers in a battle. You look carefully at their faces. They have the glow of life. There is no distortion as in the case of a dead person. O Janak Nandini, let go of sorrow, pain and attachment. They cannot be dead. I hope it is so, said Sita. While Sugriva and the other brave Vairaras sat around full of grief, Rama gained consciousness. Looking at Lakshmana lying pale and unconscious, he bemoaned their fate, he said. What shall I tell the mothers, Kaushalya and Kakei, if I return to Ayodhya without Lakshmana? How shall I console his mother, Sumitra? I would not be able to convey this sad news to them. I will end my life before Kala takes Lakshmana away from me. Lakshmana was a source of assurance and solace to me in the darkest hours of my grief. He deserved a luxurious bed and lies on bare earth today. Shocking! A weeping Ram asked Sugriv to return to Kishkintha with his generals. He felt sorry that he had not been able to fulfill his promise to Bibhishana to make him the king of Lanka. The level-headed Bibhishana, however, did not believe that Lakshmana had died. He suggested that Hanuman should fetch medicinal plants from the Chandra and Drone mountains situated near the Kshir Sagara, where Samundra Manthan had taken place in ancient times. However, while these suggestions were being discussed, with blasting winds, rolling clouds and flashes of lightning, Garuda, the son of Vinata, appeared like a flame of fire. The denizens of Lanka, including the mighty Nagas, ran helter-skelter out of fear. Even the Nagpash ties that had ensnared Ram and Lakshman were unraveled in no time. Garud humbly touched the two princes and greeted them. He wiped their faces lovingly. With Garuda's touch, their wounds were healed. Their skin regained its color. They felt strong. Their memory was revived and so was their valor. As Garuda embraced the two princes, the latter thanked him profusely and asked for his identity. Garuda replied, Raghava, I am your dear friend Garuda, your life breath that pervades the universe. I have arrived to help you in your distress because even Indra, the Gandharvas, the Devatas or Asuras could not have cut the Nagapash. You will know the secret of my friendship when you have won this war. I am certain of your victory over Ravana's forces. Mind you, Garuda doesn't tell Rama that he is, he is a chariot for him. Garuda performed a parikrama around Rama and sped away into the sky. Jai Shri Ram, Jai Shri Ram, Jai Shri Ram.